Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. A statement is defined as a declarative sentence that's either true or false, but not both simultaneously. So let's determine whether each of these sentences is considered a logical statement. A, the earth revolves around the sun. So this is a declarative sentence, and we can determine whether it's true or false, but it can't be both true and false simultaneously, so it's a logical statement. Part B, the sun revolves around the earth. Even though that's false, it's okay. It's still considered a statement. Remember, statements can be true or false as long as they're not both simultaneously, and it is a declarative sentence, so that's a statement. Part C, one plus two equals three. Although this sentence is written in mathematical symbols, it is a sentence, it is a declarative sentence, and we can determine if it's true or false, so it's a statement as well. How do you spell your name? Well, this fails the very first condition that it be a declarative sentence. It's in fact a question, so it's not a statement. This sentence is false. This is a tricky one. It is a declarative sentence. Now let's suppose that we assumed that it's referring to itself, right? When it says this sentence is false, it's referring to itself. In that case, if we assume that the sentence is true, then it contradicts us because it says it's false. If we assume it's false, then by saying it's false, it's saying it's true. So we have a paradox. So this is one of those cases where it can be both simultaneously, and so it's not actually considered a logical statement. Alan is not a good student. While this is a declarative sentence, they're not telling us the conditions that determine whether someone is a good student. It's more of an opinion. So this would not be a good example of a statement. Now, when we join two simple statements together, like the ones we just saw, we get what's called a compound statement. The statements that make up the compound statement are called component statements, and we connect them with words that are referred to as connectives, like and, or, not, and if then. So for example, I could take any of the connectives and, or, but, and if then, and join any of these three simple statements. Mathematics is mental exercise, push-ups are physical exercise, I will exercise. Let's say we wanted to connect two of them with the word and. We could say something like, push-ups are physical exercise and I will exercise. Or perhaps we would want to use the connective if then. This is an interesting one because it's not just one word. In fact, it's not a phrase. You put the if in front of one part, one component, and you put then in front of the other. So you could have something like, if mathematics is mental exercise, then I will exercise. In your homework, you may be asked to decide whether a statement is compound or not. So let's look at these two. A, if Amanda said it, then it must be true. So in order to determine if you have a compound statement, you need to know if you have two simple statements being joined by a connective. So let's identify the components. Amanda said it is a statement. It must be true is a statement and it's being joined by the connective if then. So this is a compound statement. The gun was made by Smith and Wesson. Well, we see the word and, which is often used as a logical connective. However, in this case, it's not connecting two statements. It's con connecting the two names, Smith and Wesson. So this is actually a simple statement, not a compound statement. Now let's talk about how to negate a statement and what that means. So just as an example, the sentence Max has a car is a statement and the negation of the statement would be Max does not have a car. The basic idea is that the negation of a true statement has to be false and the negation of a false statement is true. So to simplify work with logic, we use symbols. Statements are represented with letters like variables such as P, Q, or R. Those are common ones. While several symbols are used for connectives as well. So the connective, we're going to start with the connectives and, or, and the negation. So the connective and is indicated with an upside down V and, or it, it kind of looks like an upside down V. And then the connective or is, looks like a capital right side up V. So um, I always like to emphasize when we're introducing this new symbol that um, we've seen symbols related to the words and and or before. Where did we see those? 
um, we saw in sets, when we're talking about sets, intersection was associated with the word and, and union was associated with the word or. And remember, that or was the right side up you, and and was the upside down you. So it's just like that. This is just like in the same symbols, but pointy. <laughs> and then the negation is going to be a tilde like you have in Spanish. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use translate between symbols and words. So in part A, we have P and then the right side up V and then Q. So that's P or Q. And we're told in the instructions, let P represent it is raining and Q represent it is March. Write each symbolic statement in words. So we are going to take the statement P and the statement Q and join them with the word or. It is raining or it is March. Now for part B, we have that tilde, that little squiggle that represents a negation. Actually, we in words would say not Q and then an upside down V means and, not Q and P. So Q didn't happen and P happened. You can think of it that way. So um, in this case, since Q is the statement it is March, we're going to say it's n the negation of that, which is it is not March and um, P is raining. It is not March and it is raining. Now for part C, this is an interesting one because the negation is out front of these parentheses here. So what that's telling you is you're negating the whole statement. So you can, when you have that, we often translate it into it is not the case that, okay, and then we'll say whatever the statement is. In this case, P and Q. Okay, it is not the case that P and Q happen. So it is not the case that it is raining and it is March. That would be one way you could indicate that. This is an example directly out of our My Math Lab homework for our MGF 1106 class that this is a lecture for. Let P and Q represent the following simple statements. P, the chair is broken. Q, it is snowing outside. We want to write the symbolic statement for, and we have not, not Q or P not Q, this is the negation, the tilde, and then the right side of V, this is the or. So not Q or P. Q is it's snowing outside, so not Q would be it's not snowing outside. P is the chair is broken. So we want it is not snowing outside or the chair is broken, which is C. Now let's go the other way. Let's start with statements given in words and translate them into symbols. So we're going to let P represent the statement, the sky is blue, and Q the statement, it is summertime. Looking at part A, the sky is blue or it is not summertime. Sky is blue would be P or would be the right side of V symbol. And it is not summertime would be it's not Q, so negation of Q. So for part A, we get P or not Q. For part B, it is not summertime. Not summertime would be not Q, but the sky is blue. The sky is blue would be P. Now, the word but is logically equivalent to and, right? It, even though there's a little bit of a connotation there, it doesn't change the, the facts. If I said it is not summertime but the sky is blue, that's the same as if I said it's not summertime and the sky is blue. When you see the word but, it's just think that it's still and, and remember and is the upside down V. So for part B, we have negation Q and P, not Q and P. For part C, it is not the case that, remember when we put it is not the case that, it, that's a negation of a parenthesis. So think of the rest being a parenthesis. It is a negation of something, the whole statement. It is summertime and the sky is blue. It is summertime is Q, the sky is blue is P, and we're joining it with an and. It is not the case that Q and P. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up because that will help other students to find the video.